just want to look at it and I'll jump back out. Okay. Look at this, another day in paradise. What's happening? Joe Antonelli here. We're finally going to start an intro. We've been hanging her out for, feels like a couple days, but really only one full day. And I didn't do any filming really, but now we're going to get into it. We got some diving coming up, some little ledges, maybe something else. Looking for lobster, it is lobster season. And of course, we will be showing you Chef Con Con later because she has got all sorts of stuff prepared for us. And she's gonna be trying to make her first YouTube video, her first video actually. Don't think it's gonna be YouTube necessarily. But she's gonna have a mask cam on too, so someone other than me will have a perspective of it. But look at this water, this is just absolutely beautiful. We also have Perry on the helm or on the bow. He's our, our spotter. Make sure we don't crash, finds lobsters. It's because he can see double. Double the lobsters. And then we have, already did Connie, we have Nick Furrow from Palm Bay Boat and Motor Superstore. Right, Nick? Even in the Bahama, he's slanging boats. Just came over here to deliver a 14 foot kayak. And who is he going to make for lunch? Oh, he's got a lunch date. We'll talk about that later. That might be on video. You might want to stick around for that. And we have our fearless leader, Scotty McHenry. Because if you need quality tires and great service too, you got to go to Gatto's. Thanks for having me, Joey. I really appreciate that. <laughs> Connie, Scott talks on camera. <laughs> Out loud? Out loud, yes, not in his head. Sliding in the water and we're going to do some voiceovers for you. So this is a wreck in about 25 foot. Soon as we got in the water, there was a big black grouper hanging off the edge of it and it just bolted out into that coral head you can see in the background and we looked for it for a while but could not find it. I looked around the wreck, made a couple drops on it, shining the flashlight around, seeing if anything else was tucked up under there. Never saw anything worth shooting, but there was a coral head nearby and there was a nice little mutton snapper on that and that's what Connie's dropping down on and she took her perfect shot on it nice head shot and we're just trying to secure some fish we don't have any fish so we're not really looking for our heroes here just kind of looking for some better fish and this next clip you're going to see is from connie's perspective looking down at me following a hogfish with my sling i don't know if my camera got it but there's a nice hoggy got all camoed out and that slip tip shaft on the sling i'm trying to figure that out and I think I got a way I like that it's rigged, but we're gonna keep try keep trying it out. Switching spots again, and now we got Scott going down. And this is about 40 foot here, so pretty solid little drop on a rock with a nice hogfish, about the same size as mine, maybe a little bit bigger even. He took his time, super relaxed, slow movements. The hogfish hung out there for him and just kind of gave him the perfect shot. So now we got some fish for dinner. We're ready to kind of play around, do some other stuff. That'll do. Before we switch things up and start looking for lobster, I wanted to show you this clip. This was a giant parrotfish. I was just trying to get down there and film. And while I went down, I started dusting, throwing some sand up in the air to try to make some commotion to call in some fish. Uh, and it worked. A mutton started to get curious. Uh, there's that big parrotfish. But if you look in the background, uh, off to the right side of your screen, you'll see a really solid mutton show up, probably about 10 pounds or so. And I just could not get him to come in. Muttons are kind of like a trickier fish. I'm grunting, I'm throwing sand, and he was not having it. It's so pretty. So, so nice? I am videoing. I didn't want to ruin your uh, YouTube. We're about to do some diving for lobsters. We shot a couple fish. Minimal effort, but we got a few. And we're in the shade now, but it's still absolutely gorgeous. Alright, Connie's gone. Come on, Connie! 
We don't have enough fuel for that. <laughs> All right, this one's for Mason. <laughs> Get in the boat. Connie is in trouble. <laughs> Eventually, we're going to make it to some lobstering turf. So now we're on the inside. This is the Sea of Abaco. This isn't out in the ocean. And it's just beautiful. Lots of little fish. Every now and then you'll see some big muttons. There's definitely some really big muttons around here. And we're looking for lobster now. We're looking for little ledges, looking for lobsters, rocks, all sorts of things. And my favorite way to get them is using the spear, kind of tickling them out of the ledge and then grabbing them. Uh, I did use a lobster snare also here, but I was filming that one. And here's another one that walked out of the ledge when we were messing with it. And Connie went ahead and speared that one. Now you are allowed to spear lobsters in the Bahamas. And that's what we did right there. Here's kind of a look under the ledge. I got the flashlight. I look down there, make sure there's not an eel or something that's uh, going to be there if I try to grab them. And you'll see just really slowly kind of, you don't want to scare them really. Like you don't want to go in all aggressive. But just kind of guide them out of there. I'm using the uh, slingshaft. And the way I was doing it is I was kind of pushing them out. And there was a few of us in the water. So it was easy for someone else to uh, swim down and either shoot them. Or I could try to grab them or shoot them. This one took off. So I know someone else is going to watch the ledge. I load up the sling. And loaded up backwards. But it doesn't matter. I'm watching a lobster because you will lose them in that bottom. They camouflage really well, you can see. But nice, simple shot. I have no problem shooting lobsters in the Bahamas. Some people get bent out of shape, but I mean, we're going to harvest it anyways. Our limit's 10 per vessel. So we kind of do whatever is the easiest and most efficient way. There's another one down in the rock. Put the spear in it and uh, went back up to the surface and then came back down and pulled them out. Another really nice lobster. <laughs> now here's one of my bigger lobsters this is probably the biggest lobster i got while we were over there and we did the same thing scared him out into the grass and now i'm dropping down and i have the lobster snare so the snare is like basically a slip knot sort of thing i have it behind the lobster here i cinched it too early it didn't didn't hold on to him there you gotta let it get up towards their body so the lobster walks into it, cinch it down, and then you can pull the lobster up. Now we got something kind of fun coming up. We decided to try to teach Nick how to use the sling. We wanted Nick to shoot the sling. We're at the dock, taking a little break before we go out fishing in the evening. Oh, he almost got him. He's em. firing the sling at the yeah. mangrove snapper around the dock to see if we could get one of those. And good practice. That was close. Just drop down again. Oh, look, frigate up top. See the frigate? There! <laughs> I thought I really lost it, but I didn't. That's the right one. That's got to be the right one. No, you're good. Just keep holding it. Keep turning the handle. Come on, Nikki. No, don't pull the line. Just let it go smooth. You got? That's all right. Just let him keep going through. Let me have your tip, Connie. All right, we got a Groupa! Look at that Groupa! Oh, a right. red. Big ol' red. Whatever, at least you got a big grouper. Watch out, it's got your head. I got him. Ah, that's the wrong elbow. That's a big red. That is a giant red. Well, I think I got my goal over 15 pounds. Nick got a stud of a red groupa.